Weave It Pro for the Mac, Checking Floats, Designing, Network Drafting, Advancing Twill, and Echo Weave. One of the more important things to do when you're designing a draft is to check for long floats. And I want to demonstrate that so that you can see how these repeats will impact your floats. So on the design menu, pick Find Floats at that the bottom. I'm not going to look on the back um, from this project. It'll say allowable float would be five. Anything longer I would like to know about. So I pick that and it's showing me that there are four floats. And if you look here, it, you can all see that that's only three picks long. So I'm going to bring up the fabric view, which expands out those repeats. So in this view, you see the repeat is collapsed here, both of those repeats. But over here in this view, which I'll zoom in a little more to make it more visible, you can see that the view is expanded and you, you're looking at six floats here and three floats here. So this is the collapsed view side and this is the expanded view side and that was what I wanted you to see. It's also possible to fix it. So you can pick the mark mode here and if you go over here you can click on a square and toggle the tie up and you will see that was happened right here. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. It all depends on your designing and your warping as to whether that technique works. For this demo, I am going to show you how to create a network draft in Weave It Pro for the Mac. I'm not going to teach you how to do network drafting, but to just show you how to achieve a network draft in, in Weave It. So, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is change the number of shafts and treadles. You can create network drafts with eight shafts and eight treadles, but it's easier to demonstrate if you have more shafts. So we're just going to use 12 and change our pattern to use 12. Then I'm going to get some space here and I'm going to select the draw edit mode and I'm going to just go over here and draw a line. And I'm going to sort of make a curved line. You have to go really slow otherwise you don't get a good design. And then we can kind of clean it up. Maybe, yeah, let's leave it there. But let's kind of make this a little steeper there. Okay, so we have a steep curve. Then we can go to turn on our network. That's on the tools menu. And you'll see right now it says no network. If I pick use network, we can pick uh, an initial. My favorite's the four end initial, so that's already checked. When you, after you turn that on, you now see light gray squares marking the threading and the treadling. These are used to guide you as to where the network is, and it makes it very convenient to put your line on the network. Okay, the first way is to select Make a select key and then we'll select all the threads in the threading. So we'll select all. Then we go down to the bottom here and pick the network icon. Changes the selection to lay on the network. Okay, and you'll notice that each of those warps popped up to a position on the network. And sometimes it's nice after you do that to clean it up a little. I have a one there and a one here and you want to watch that because you want it to end 
evenly so that the next one is one. So I can either add some more, which maybe that's what I'll do, and um, or I can delete that one. So I'm going to put back in the draw mode, and I'm going to just draw on the network. And then you'll notice that as I draw the other way, as I draw on the network, it actually puts them immediately on the network wherever I go. Okay, so now you'll notice that the next one here is one, and so I stopped here. And I can, I don't know, clean it up a little. And you can just move things around. Makes it, you know, I think we'll pop those up. Just, just to get a nice curve that we want. I don't like little single danglies, so we'll stick that one up on there. So now I have a nice curve. When you use a four-end initial, we're now going to work on the tie-up, and when you use a four-end initial, you um, need to have a twill that's based on four. So that means three up, one down, or three down, one up, and or two up, two down. I'm going to put three down, and then I'm going to do three up, and then I'm going to do an alternating, that sort of a plane weave kind of thing, and I create my tie up. So I have a three down, three up, and then alternating. And then I'm going to go over to my line mode and just draw a straight line here. And then we'll look at it in the fabric mode to see what we got. It's kind of interesting. It's sort of a jaggedy thing. It looks like something's right here is kind of funny. I don't know what that is. Uh, where would that be? It would be a lone... Sometimes you have a lone one that's sitting there. And that would cause that little blip to show up there. And the lone one looks like it's right there. So, one way to find these things is I take a color and temporarily I put it in mark mode and I go over and I just color that cell and it pops in over here and you can see immediately where that was and that is the the culprit so I'm going to undo that and move the cell up to oops, undo that go back to this color move this cell back up there and now it looks smooth so it's okay so that shows you the ways that you can draw it to draw a network draft. I'm going to continue on with this demo to show you how to do an advancing twill. So I'm, because that looks really nice with networks. So I'm going to pick the selection mode and I'm going to cut these threads out so that I only have five left. And I'm going to pick the selection mode again, where I already had it. And now I'm going to select those first five. Now I'm going to go over to the icon down here, tool that's the second from the bottom, it says Create Advancing Twill from the Selection. I pick that. I can pick how many steps I want to advance, and I can say I want to do a full cycle. Um, usually the steps are based on how many threads are in your advance. In, you usually want to get an odd even sequence out of it. So in this case, we'll stay with the one and advance one cycle for a full cycle. And you can see it added a lot of threads. In the fabric view, instantly we can see that um, we got a much nicer looking pattern than we had before with that network draft. And you can go down there and you can see that it's really pretty. Advancing twills really do make it nice. I'm going to close this window and I think I will zoom here out a bit so that you can see the full advance of this twill. Um, so that ends the network drafting and advancing twill. drafts that have both network drafting and advancing twill in them. So we're going to create an echo weave draft from our network draft.
To do that, it's very simple. I go to the design menu. I pick parallel threadings. Now there's a lot on this dialog, but most of it we aren't going to use. We're not going to put anything in the treadling, and we're only going to use the threading, and we're only going to put in two lines, but I'm going to make them distinct. I don't want it yellow, and it's going to be half offset to our pattern. So it has created a parallel line. I'll spread this out, and you can see the pretty jumbled, but it is a parallel line. And we'll look at the fabric view. And you can see that the interesting and the wonderful thing about Echo Weave is that you see the multiple colors. So there's blue, yellow, green, and sort of a pinky red. But when I look at it, I see green, but there's no green in the pattern. So that's what Echo Weave does. It, it blends the colors and you get iridescence and multiple colors. And so there you have a really pretty draft made with Echo Weave. Thank you from Weave It Pro for the Mac. See it at www.weaveit.com and buy it in your app store on your Mac.